You're designed for analytics. An Accenture hosted Hangout. My name is Kate Fleury and I will be moderating our Hangout today. We're going to be discussing the topic of design for analytics, which is a key component of the recently published Accenture technology vision. I'm joined by Gavin Will from the DDA arm of our business, and I'll just hand over to those guys to introduce themselves. Hi, thanks for that, uh, Kate. My name is Will Gatehouse. Um, I, as Kate said, work uh, in Accenture as part of our analytics team. I've been doing analytics now for the last 13, 14 years, and I also look after the new area of big data across Europe. Gav. Thanks, Will. Um, hello, everyone. So I'm uh, Gav Stevenson, um, also um, within our, our analytics practice in the UK. Um, so I um, I'm a solution architect and delivery lead uh, within the Accenture uh, data analytics practice. Uh, focus on large scale transformation um, across industry, mainly focusing around uh, financial services. Great, thank you. So, Gav, it seems that yesterday's BI is today's analytics, but what's actually changed? Yeah, so I think, you know, Kate, if you look uh, back uh, you know, five or ten years, um, organizations were initially very focused on um, actually how to gather data uh, and how to consolidate into single platforms like data warehouses, um, single views of customers and, and those sorts of concerns. Um, but I think as time's moved on, um, the challenge has gone away from um, you know, understanding the fundamentals about how to bring a single platform together um, and have moved into a space where because of the information that's available, it's now how do you best analyze and understand how to take, take action on that. Um, so Accenture really looks at things from um, either the traditional sort of BI um, perspective and, and in the descriptive analytical world where you're looking at uh, data historically over time and, and, and projecting um, you know, action on that basis uh, into a world of uh, more predictive analytics and forward thinking views. Um, and this is where uh, you know leading organisations are, are really starting to play uh, in broader analytics space as it, as it's today. Um, and I guess you know that's kind of the landscape dimension over time. Um, Will, do you want to talk a bit about uh, perhaps from a, a data and a technology perspective? Yeah, no, thanks, Gav. So, you know, when I first sort of started off doing the whole BI um, piece, you'd talk about with kind of trepidation, uh, a one terabyte data warehouse. That was big. That was sort of took a lot of architecting. Now we're talking about one terabyte coming across in a day. And also not only the sort of speed of that data, the volume of that data, but you know, it used to be data would be very structured. It would come from a billing system. It would come from a CRM system. Nowadays, there are so many other ways that data can be captured. So it might come from a social, social media. It might well come from uh, machines. There are lots more sensors. You're seeing a vast array of, of data and information. And what's, what that's sort of driving is, whilst previously you would have been talking about maybe in your analytics architecture, you'd be talking about a simple database. There would be a reporting system on top. You might just be venturing into some of the predictive uh, tools as well. But there'd be no way the complexity and the number of different tools for different purposes. And so what you're seeing as the technology, or oh, as the data changes, the technology is moving with it. So more and more we're seeing the in database um, to stop data movement, increase performance. In memory is also following uh, hard on its heels. And also, as well as a sort of from a technology aspect, there is also the speed at which it needs to be delivered. So previously, the data would be coming in an overnight batch. People are very comfortable with that. That is the way their business worked. However, you know, more and more as people wanting to get rapidity and speed and value very quickly, you're finding that overnight is, is no longer good enough. So the systems have got to adapt to basically have information coming through every second, every minute, whatever it might take, but certainly intraday. And as well as the speed of the uh, insight and the way they use it, there is also the development. So typically, you'd be looking at projects that would run for six months, a year, and that is the way that be, it would happen. And people were comfortable with that, you know, looking back 10 years ago, because it was something new. It would be giving them a competitive edge. Now, however, where you are, a lot of people have got data warehouses. They're in. So 
you're looking not for those six month projects, it is now the six to eight weeks. And again, that sort of drives a totally sort of different behavior as to you know, how, you, how you actually sort of build the systems and work with the technology. Thank you, Will. So how do you think then organizations need to adapt their thinking to better design for analytics? So uh, you know, where, where companies need to look at is what are they trying to achieve with this information? So again, historically, it was very much, I need to get a data warehouse in place. I need to put the technology. I might put a system um, that captures the data for me. But the thought was really from a technology perspective, rather now that are highly competing analytics, as a totally sort of switch on its head. So now, for example, you are looking, um, or the business are trying to find out, well, what I actually want to do with that data? How am I going to be using it? You know, what is the business rationale and context for it? When you understand that, or say you understand the data that's needed, and then only at that point, you sort of starting to think, well, actually, these are the systems that I need to capture. I mean, an example, kind of example I came across the other day was, um, with one of the sort of postal companies uh, based out in the US where they were wanting to understand the efficiency of the vehicles or the fleet vehicles that they had. So they looked to set up the telemetry on, on the truck and as a result of that they were getting insight that um, whenever the trucks in the US have to turn left there was an issue from time because they had to idle a lot more and the idle resulted in more fuel, i.e. more money. And by doing the analytics and sort of designing that, you know, for analytics, they actually found out that they could save uh, 9 million gallons of fuel a year, which obviously is quite a, you know, a decent cost. Gav, what do, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, and, and, and I mean, just, uh, just to, I think, to extend some of those, some of those points, um, I think the challenge uh, today and, and the way um, organizations need to, need to rethink around analytics is that it's we've moved away from a situation where it's about trying to find the data, right? There's lots of data there. Um, you know, building on what Will was saying, you know, actually a lot of organisations have got too much information. They don't really know what what to do with it. All there's stuff coming in uh, through social media, through sensory systems, sensory devices. Um, internally within their organisation, they will have reams and reams of information around customers, products, um, and and various different offerings. Um, what's important, however, um, that's sort of being able to understand the right information that's needed as opposed to just the plethora of information that's, that's out there. And that's the important distinction because you know if you look at traditional software development and software design, it's based around functional requirements for a given system. Whereas actually, uh, if you look at it from an analytics perspective, you might find that a single application and its functional requirements can be met 100%, but when actually looking at the end-to-end -end business problem and business question, you might actually need to add additional um, data capture into those applications uh, to harness more information to better address the, the business question. So I think it's about looking at the information values, starting with the business question to understand how your system design needs to adapt in order to capture the right uh, information up front. I think that's one key area. And I think the other part of it as well um, is around actually business agility and uh, you know, the ability to make decisions and actions off of that information. You know, we'll mention the, the data velocity point. So lots of information is coming in when you design these systems, but actually how do you then take action as a result of that? And part of that is, is being able to not only capture but process and then take action uh, based on the information that's that's coming out, and that's I think that's I think another important step. Thank you. So, what do you think are the broader implications of this then? So, I, m I mentioned the example earlier of the uh, postal company. I think the key thing here is for the businesses to understand how they can be disruptive. Yeah, how can they how they can gain market share and how they can sort of. Um, go against the competitors. Another nice example I saw more yeah, in, recently in the retail space was, uh, and again, a good example of disruption, where a retailer could understand where their customer was going through an app that they had uh, put on the phone. So as soon as that person was going into a, co a competitor's store, 
what they immediately had sort of coming up was an advert coming from from this uh, company saying, look, if you can get into our our store, we will give you X amount discount on a certain product line. And then not only was it sort of giving the advert, but also what it was doing was giving a countdown. So the longer it took for that person to get into um, the store, the less of a discount. So again, nice, nice example of disruption. You can understand where your customer is. You can uh, try and get people out of your competitor stores and into yours as soon as possible. I mean, Gav, I don't know whether you've got an example from your side as well. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know, uh, uh, one that's uh, uh, definitely uh, out there a lot at the moment is what uh, insurance companies are doing. Um, you know, particularly around in a car insurance, where actually, um, you know, they're putting devices in people's cars capturing information around driving patterns and driving behaviors that actually allows them to tune and configure and optimize the offers that they're delivering to their customers uh, around you know better premiums based on better driving behaviors so so there's an example of I guess where you know information is kind of viewed across this uh, you know a complete supply chain right from uh, you know capture and input through to final action and outcome and that's a really key point to, to bring out is is you know looking at Information and and data through a through a supply chain lens, if you like, um, which will start to give you uh, you know better action and outcome. That's really interesting. Thank you. So, linked to that, with some of the examples that you just mentioned, it seems that we need to capture, store, and process the right information, and that's that's the key point. Um, we hear a lot about big data, but what does it actually mean in the context of analytics? That's a very interesting question, Kate, and it's certainly one that I'm hearing um, from a lot of the clients, or CIO, and indeed CEO level people that I'm that I speak to nowadays. I mean, it's a question that's on the sort of forefront of their mind. They're seeing a lot about it in the press, and they're wondering, well, what does it mean to my business? Should I be getting involved with it? Um, is it something that will give me a competitive competitive edge? And I mentioned at the beginning that in the in the sort of data landscape nowadays. It's not just the traditional rows and columns and the structured data, which is very, very well handled by traditional data warehouse environments. However, now where we are is we've got data of lots of different structures that, that typically would have been ignored. And for example, if you look at um, all the sensor information, so you've got command centers, operation centers in utilities, for example, monitor the condition of the, the network. Now, typically the way they use it or have used it is if it sends an alarm out, they will react to it. If there is no alarm, then that data just goes into the ether and nothing's used of it. However, there is a lot of richness in that information. So it's very much um, how do you capture? Because you know, with that richness, there's also a lot of volume. That data is coming in at speed, and it has lots of different structures. So where we're seeing the big data very much playing in is the ability to pull that information together to allow you know, companies to analyze and interrogate that the information that they that they have. The other sort of area, interest enough, I mentioned earlier around the speed it takes to create value, the time to value. With the sort of traditional data warehouses, a lot of time and effort is spent creating a model. And you know that model is by its nature potentially quite complex because you want to try and capture different permutations. What we're seeing a lot at Accenture now is the ability with a big data environment to bring lots of unstructured, not only unstructured data together, but also instead of having to put a structured model on it, we have ways of discovering that data, identifying true insights, getting those insights out in a matter of weeks, engage with your business uh, and, and your client and, and show them stuff that they've never, you know, honestly never seen before. And what that is now doing, and we're finding, is really sort of re-engaging the business into the whole concept of what analytics can do for their company. And as a result of that, we're now starting to build systems that are absolutely focused on value and the return on that and the business buy-in, which you know traditionally was somewhere you might have had challenges on. We're finding that that is you know, really sort of coming coming to the forefront. So. You know, in a summary, the, the big data is allowing you to bring lots of stuff, different structures together. It is allowing you to get into information that you potentially never would have analyzed before, and it's giving you a capability to very rapidly, um, and you know, get get into that value and that insight that then can be incorporated within the company. So, 
in in your view, what do you what role do you see Accenture playing in big data, and how does Accenture innovate in this space? So yeah, Kate, Kate, well, certainly with Accenture, I'm seeing more and more now uh, interest and discussions being held with the with my various sort of clients. So, you know, for example, I'm working um, with a water utility um, in Europe that is very keen and interested in how they use their sensors. So. What we're having to do is work out first of all from a cloud platform. So we're working closer with cloud. We're working with real-time data with sensors such as um, uh, you know, machine sensors and water sensors, and also some very innovative um, visualization tools. So there's a certain tool we're using which represents on a uh, map uh, all the networks that companies had. So it's a you know, really sort of interesting time at the minute, pulling together all the various different technologies, um, looking at new technologies, understanding what they can do. I'm working very closely with our technical labs at the minute that you know, are coming up with some fantastic um, New capability, uh, other you know other other sort of things. Gav's mentioned in the insurance industry, you know, some really uh, interesting telemetry we're looking at. So again, yeah, how how do you sort of handle all this data? How do you work with this data? But for me, the the best thing is is that when you're working very closely with the business, very closely with the the uh, client, you see that light bulb come on. You know, you've given them stuff where they're sort of been. Uh, saying I've never been able to see that before. Now you're giving it to them. Now you can see the sort of that light bulb go on, and you you know the ultimate is you can see how it changes their business. So you know, be it the complaints get less, be it that the the value goes up. It's doing that you know with a technology and, and and brand new leading edge technology that for me absolutely gives you know gives gives a buzz. And I'm also seeing the purple you know people working with me. You know they're very much sort of getting enthused behind it. So all in all, it's you know. It's becoming a fantastic place to work, a very interesting place to work. So you know, it, it so, so, certainly, certainly for me, there's a lot, there's a lot that Accenture can do in this place, and, and indeed, people working with Accenture and people I'm looking for can would be able to you know, lots of uh, very interesting opportunities. Thank you. And um, Gav, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I think. Um, uh, I mean, I think Will's painted a, a great picture of some of the some of the work we do and how we innovate in, in the big data space. Um, if I can probably just uh, summarise up maybe one or two of the key themes from from today's uh, uh, discussion, I think you know first of all, as we mentioned, um, you know today's challenge is is less about the amount of information; um, it's more around organisations having the right information. Um, and then I think moving from understanding uh, that information becomes a need to understand how software platforms can be designed to capture and harness data in the right way to build analytics based platforms and really harvest information as an asset. Um, so this is moving away from the traditional functional design of an application mm -hmm. into thinking about what the what the business outcome needs to be more holistically uh, and then designing applications uh, on that basis. And I think you know um, big data uh, as a theme at the moment plays plays a great part in, in analytics from both from a, a data consumption perspective and being able to you know really harness the the wealth of information that's coming in today um, and also from a, a computation and from a processing perspective as, as, as well um, but I think the root of it you know comes back to uh, the concept you know design for analytics and making sure that organizations can harness the, the data that they've got, access the right information, um, and being able to act on that at speed um, to align to business processes and business outcomes, um, depending on what, uh, what that data and information is telling them. That's fantastic. Um, thank you both very much for your time and for all your insights. And also thanks to everyone who joined us for on our Design for Analytics Hangout. Um, as I've mentioned, this is part one of a series of Hangouts. And if you found this interesting and if you'd like to find out more about our technology vision, then you can find out more at Accenture.com. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about some careers at Accenture, um, you can visit Accenture.com forward slash UK careers. And you can also follow us on Google+, Twitter, and on Facebook. Thanks very much and look forward to speaking to you soon.